All right, guys, so this video will walk you through the exact steps I took to become an effective Scrum Master Facilitator. Now, if you go around the internet, you will discover people discussing many stances of a Scrum Master. Now, I don't know about you, but I found it somewhat tricky to keep all those stances in my mind when I was in this role years ago. What can I say? I have the memory of a goldfish. So, to get around this impediment, I distilled the possible stances I could find on the internet into three main categories. These three categories represent the three primary responsibilities of you as a Scrum Master, depending upon how mature your team is. Mature in terms of how well your team can handle uncertainty. As a Scrum Master, your three critical responsibilities towards your team are teaching, observing, and coaching. Coaching comes last, and I have talked about it on numerous occasions that you might be familiar with. If not, I will leave the link to the LinkedIn post in the description for you to check it out. There is, however, a fourth responsibility which surrounds these three key responsibilities of a Scrum Master. The fourth responsibility is to facilitate. As a Scrum Master slash Servant Leader, you facilitate slash enable your team's activities, no matter how mature your team is. And here's the interesting part, the quality of your facilitation skills determine how well you do as a teacher, as an observer, and as a coach. Isn't that fascinating? So as a side note, if you are starting your role as a Scrum Master, if you want to become a star Scrum Master, focus on how you can improve your facilitation skills. Also, don't expect anyone to give you a magic formula. Practice, rinse, repeat is your mantra. Having said that, I can give you a starting point. You still need to perfect the craft of facilitating events as a unique human being that you are. When I ask people to describe how they facilitate events in meetings, the responses I get often surprises me. Of course, I am referring to the majority of Scrum Masters, not all of them, so don't roast me in the comments. The answers I get are usually along the lines of, oh, I let the event take its natural turns and twists and intervene as needed. Or something like, I try to nudge the team in the right direction every now and then. Now, don't get me wrong, there is nothing wrong with these answers. But if this is what you think you're supposed to be doing as a Scrum Master Facilitator, you will have difficulty getting the team to deliver the precise outcomes at the end of these events and meetings. There are a few prerequisites to becoming a Star Facilitator. First prerequisite is the right mindset. One of the most common misconceptions about the role of the Scrum Master is its relationship with the phrase servant leadership. The term servant leader doesn't mean that you blindly serve your team like a butler. The term implies that you lead your team as a facilitator. You create an environment where the team can do what it does the best. As a Scrum Master facilitator, you are not supposed to sit back, relax and observe the events. No, you don't. It doesn't matter how mature your team is. You are supposed to manage and control events flow so the event delivers the expected outcome. Let me say that again. You're supposed to manage and control the flow of the event so the event delivers the expected outcomes. Understand it carefully. This is not the same as commanding and controlling. This is herding the sheep so they may graze the grass. This is steering the conversations towards the desired outcomes. Second prerequisite is transparency. As a scrum master, I always kept myself up to date with the upcoming meetings. Also, I made sure that I was invited to all the group decision making sessions. Of course, whether or not I attended those events depended upon my availability and many other factors. But I always asked for transparency. So if you haven't already, ask your team to give you complete transparency into the meetings. If your team is reluctant and hides stuff from you, get out of that team as soon as possible. You can't help them. In fact, in my experience, in such situations, all your attempts to help the team will be looked upon as negative. Therefore, it is crucial that you set the right expectations with your team at the beginning of your engagement. I describe how you can set the right expectations with your team in this video. All right, so the third prerequisite of becoming a star facilitator is knowledge of the desired outcome. Without knowing where your team wants to land, you will keep flying the airplane that goes nowhere. So, mindset, transparency, and knowledge about the desired outcomes. These are the prerequisites of successfully facilitating an event or a meeting. With that out of the way, let me tell you exactly what it takes to facilitate successful meetings and events. There are essentially two parts to successfully facilitating an event or a meeting. Preparation and delivery. Preparation has three components. The first component is planning. Before the meeting starts, you plan the process. You select the tools that will help you and your team progress towards the desired outcome. You choose the appropriate facilitation process. For example, do you want an open discussion or a more structured step-by-step -step discussion? A well-facilitated open discussion may be the most straightforward option, but ask yourself whether using an open discussion will help you achieve the participation that you need. Would it help manage the discussion with the number of participants involved? 
Can you address the wide range of topics required? Can you come up with enough ideas and solutions? Can you gain the desired consensus or buy-in? If the answer is no, and usually it is, then it is safe to go with the structured process. Here are a few guidelines about how you can do that. Number one, if you need to accommodate participation from a large group of people, consider breaking the larger group into small breakout groups. Number two, if you're concerned about getting enough participation, then give people a task in the agenda itself to think about and write down what they want to contribute. Number three, if you want to get the ideas flowing, then consider including a brainstorming session. I have indeed created a video on innovative and highly effective brainstorming ideas. Link is in this corner if you want to check it out. Now, if you're dealing with something unique and don't want to use these suggested guidelines, you can design yourself a custom facilitation process by asking yourself these questions. How many people are participating? What is the nature of topics under discussion? What type of involvement do people need to have? What are the job titles of the people participating? How well do they know the subject under discussion? How well do they know the other participants? And lastly, how much time do you have available for the meeting or event. Regardless of the facilitation process you define, it is critical that you keep everyone focused on the desired outcomes. All right, the second component of preparation is creating a realistic agenda, emphasizing realistic. Choosing the facilitation approach and designing the agenda for the event go hand in hand. You begin to visualize the event in your head as you iterate between selecting the facilitation process and drafting the agenda. To help you write a proper meeting agenda, I want you to answer these nine questions. Number one. What is the best sequence for presenting the topics? Number two, how will participants get to know each other if they don't already? Number three, how will they gain a common understanding of the desired outcome? Number four, if needed, how much time do you need for the breakout sessions? Number five, how and when will the breakout groups provide feedback to the broader group? Number six, when will you recap and summarize? Number seven, how will you achieve the closure of the overall event? Number eight, what do participants need to know before or during the event. And lastly, number nine, how will this be provided and when? Having a solid agenda will focus everyone's attention on the desired outcome and provide a good flow and a structure to the event. Once you have zeroed in on the facilitation process and penned down a compelling agenda, the final component of the preparation is to consider how you will direct and control the meeting flow. This is where you reverse your facilitation skills and examine some what-if scenarios, like what if there is a huge disagreement? What if your team is unable to find a solution? How will you handle that? To help you get started, I have prepared a list of six questions. Number one, do you have the meeting ground rules ready? What are the meeting norms? Things like, what kind of interactions do you expect to see? How would you guarantee that people respect each other's opinions? How will questions be handled? Write down these rules in advance and then propose and request an agreement before the start of the event. Number two, have you figured out how you will set the scene? Write down and plan how you will go over the objectives and agenda, ensuring that everyone knows their role and what the group is trying to accomplish. Number three, have you figured out how you will get the discussion started? Write down and prepare how you will make sure that everyone introduces themselves. Do you have an icebreaker in mind to get the meeting started on the right foot? Number four, how will you keep the momentum going? As the session proceeds, you may need to interfere to ensure that attendees remain engaged and interested. For example, when I notice that energy levels are beginning to decline, I almost always insert a break. Powerful technique. Number five, how will you keep the agenda under control? I suggest that you prepare yourself to monitor checkpoints and occasionally summarize to let the participants know what they have achieved and what's next. Number six, have you figured out how you will intervene? As a facilitator, you intervene in a variety of situations. So prepare a strategy for when and how you will do it. Again, try and maintain a soft touch, making sure you stay focused on the intended goals. Interventions that involve rage, conflict and disagreement are one of the most challenging. So as a facilitator, it is critical to focus on group's need first, while considering the sentiments and views of all the people engaged in any argument. If you haven't already, look at the conflict coaching cards I created a while back. It is available for free download. I'll leave a link in the description for you to check it out. All right, so these were the three components of preparation. The first part of becoming a star facilitator. The second part is delivery. And delivery has two components of its own. The first component delivery is situational awareness. Here are a few points to help you be situationally aware during a meeting. Number one, Keep an eye on the side conversations. Side conversations limit the ability of others to focus. Number two, keep an eye on the clock. By the same time, be flexible. Try to balance people's desires for involvement and need to keep things moving smoothly. Difficult, but can be mastered with practice. Number three, keep an eye on the people who are not taking part in the event. 
Ask yourself, is there anything that's bothering them? What's stopping them from participating? What can you do to engage them in the discussion? Number four, pay attention to group's behavior as a whole, both verbal and non-verbal. Nothing kills an event's spirit faster than a group that remains silent. Also, keep your ears open for any obvious personal assaults. If there are any personal assaults, step in and mediate immediately. In such cases, reminding everyone of the ground rules is by far the best place to start. The second component of delivery is properly recording the outcomes of the meeting. Now, you will find several scrum masters who would argue differently in the name of self-organizing and self-managing teams. However, keep in mind that not all teams are mature enough to know what to do with the meeting's outcomes. Therefore, as a leader, you must demonstrate how to accomplish this by setting a good example. A Scrum Master facilitator records or assigns someone else to record and communicate the meeting's outcomes. Be it the action items or people needed to act upon those action items, make sure that participants understand what's recorded, how it will be recorded, and who will be recording it. This was the entire process that I used to facilitate events as a Scrum Master. To be a successful facilitator, you must understand when to take the lead and when to remain neutral and take a backseat. This is a difficult balance to maintain and therefore effective planning and guidance are essential to succeed in this role. Also, try not to get distracted by the content or viewpoints of different people. So there you have it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you would like to go further down the rabbit hole of this kind of team engagement stuff, you might like to check out this video over here, which sort of prompted me to create this one, which is about five uncommon and innovative brainstorming techniques which you might not have heard of before. Bit of a useful topic if you are a Scrum Master. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great time. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and I will see you in the next video.